Welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. Are you over 40 and tired of struggling with your weight? Do you feel like you're constantly starting over with your nutrition and fitness? I'm Lil, a certified nutrition coach and former registered nurse, and I too have been there. At the age of 44, I decided I was done with being stuck in the vicious diet cycle. I became a nutrition coach and created the Feel Your Best formula for women who are ready to do things differently. If you're ready to build a better relationship with food, get your energy back, build muscle, lose fat, and keep it off for good, then you're in the right place. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's build your formula for feeling your best. Hey, welcome back to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. I'm Lil. I am so glad you're tuning in today. I know that this is going to be a popular episode. And here's the thing. I know it's going to be popular because when my clients reach out to me, this is one of the top things that I hear that you're feeling overweight. You're feeling out of shape. You used to feel so good. There was a certain time in your life when you were working out and you loved how you looked in your clothes and you had so much energy. And it just feels like it's so hard to get back there. So my job as a coach is to help you get there in a very reasonable, sustainable way. Because a lot of the mistakes that I see people making that are keeping you overweight, that are keeping you out of shape, that are keeping you from reaching your goals, it's because you're trying to do things based on bad information. So I kind of want to review these mistakes because often we can find the solution when we acknowledge the things that are part of the problem. So I'm going to list out these 10 things here that, in my opinion, are a huge part of the problem. They're a huge reason why you're stuck, why you feel like even when you're doing everything right, you're still not getting anywhere. So let's dive in. Okay, number one, let's start at the beginning getting started and sometimes often that is the hardest part i mean when someone fills out the form to reach out to me and learn more about my coaching i always congratulate them i i'm I'm gonna if you fill out that form the first thing i'm gonna say to you is great job just reaching out because that is often the hardest part oftentimes you're going to be scrolling You're going to be bouncing around from maybe different Instagram accounts or different blogs and just kind of trying to figure out what is going on. What do I need to do? What's my next step? But reaching out to someone and finally drawing that line in the sand that you're going to start taking action, that is such a huge indicator that you're going to be successful because it takes courage to reach out for help, especially if someone, you know, you don't know them and maybe, you know, it's a little bit different from going to the gym where like your best friend drags you to the gym. That is a different story. But for you taking responsibility and saying, I'm ready to get started, that is such a great sign that you're going to keep going. Now, The problem, the reason why the start stops so many people is because you might be waiting for the perfect time. And it's like this arbitrary thought in your head of, I'm going to start when work is not as busy. I'm going to start when my kids don't need me as much. Um, Spoiler alert. (laughs) Your kids are always going to need you. My oldest is an adult and he still needs me, not in the same way that he did when he was two, but your role as a parent is never going to end. And your work, it's probably going to have some seasons to it, especially if you're in something cyclical like an accountant or something. But at the end of the day, if you can't set aside 30 minutes a day to do a workout, if you can't set aside some time on the weekend to 
you know, just take a look at your food situation and start to educate yourself on what are the next steps towards living healthier, then you you really just need to get honest with yourself that there is never going to be a perfect time. I started my own journey with macros and strength training and everything that became my method, the feel your best formula. I started that at the most difficult time in my life. Um, I've talked about it here on the podcast, but it was because I finally realized these other things I was trying to do just were not sustainable and they weren't realistic. And so many people out there have so much on their plate. And number one, starting the process is really overwhelming. And then sustaining the process is impossible when you're trying to follow these diets and plans that literally just take over your life. So don't let the start stop you. If the start is stopping you, that is the the mistake that is going to keep you stuck forever. Just realizing it's not going to be perfect. Start before you're ready. Just ask yourself instead of listing out all the things you cannot do, ask yourself, what is one thing that I can do? It doesn't need to be this all in or all out situation. And a lot of times we use that mindset to sabotage ourselves from not starting anything at all. Okay. So let's move on to number two, and this is a big one, and I talk about it here a lot, but thinking that success needs to look like weight loss. And I would say this is the biggest mistake that is keeping you stuck because you got to build those habits first. If you listened to last week's episode with Robin, she talks about this. She talks about her experience in my program and how much easier her fat loss phase is going because she put the time and effort into creating those habits. So what happens when we focus on weight loss as the only measure of our success? Well, oftentimes we give up because the scale isn't going to go down all the time and you aren't, you know, going to see other benefits if you are putting your blinders on and only focusing on weight loss. Why is this? Well, first of all, we are told that weight loss is the measure of success. You are bombarded with before and after photos. And it's wild to me that even these diet programs that are trying to sell you on this idea that like we're going to improve this medical problem like a gut issue or a hormone issue so a medical problem and then they're selling it to you by selling you a before and after photo that is clearly highlighting weight loss and those are two completely different things what they're really doing is selling you a weight loss program and this idea that weight loss is a measure of health, even though they said they're helping you fix a medical problem. It's very odd to me how before and afters, because those before and after photos, those, we are visual beings. Those hit us right in the gut and we say, I want that. And it makes us feel all these emotions and desires and makes us feel like, hey, if we do what she did, then we're going to look like her too. But this is a road to failure. Why is that? Because number one, you want fat loss, not weight loss. And if you don't have the solid habits that give you the ability to just focus on fat loss instead of general weight loss, then you're just going to end up doing the same thing that you've always done, which is losing a bunch of weight and then losing muscle along the way and having to feel like you need to start over. And then um, number two, I suggest you listen to my podcast episode number 85 on the beginner's trap because this is where I'm going to do where I do a deeper dive 
into that process and why, you know, just constantly focusing on weight loss leads to this vicious cycle. And I do a deep dive into that. So I highly recommend listening to episode 85 because instead of just focusing on weight loss, let's look for success in other areas. Let's be proud of ourselves for nourishing our body with the macro and micronutrients that it needs, okay? And that can be done in maintenance without gaining a pound. And be proud of your food choices. You know, if you've been eating in a way that had a complete lack of awareness of the nutrients that your body needed, and if you have just been focusing on labeling foods as good or bad as to whether or not they're going to help you lose weight, then you're missing out on the benefits of eating a balanced diet. So when you make that shift, that is something to really be proud of. Look at your energy levels. How are you feeling? That in my mind, that is the biggest measure of success. And I'm actually going to do, I think, next week's episode on how to actually improve your energy because I know that's what so many of you want. And also look at how much weight you're lifting. There is no greater feeling than having your own personal record for the weight that you're lifting. It is so empowering. It's so cool. And that's not going to happen if you're starving yourself all the time. And just remind yourself that weight loss is not the whole story. So thinking that success needs to look like weight loss is a huge mistake that is keeping you stuck. All right, mistake number three, and we just talked about this in a recent episode where I talked about step count. I think that was episode 99. Um, But if you're not moving enough and you are not aware of how much your movement or lack of movement is affecting your overall energy balance, you got to get on that. You got to start being aware of how much you're moving and um, acknowledging if you are sedentary, then that you know, has a consequence on the amount of food that your body actually requires. And maybe there's been a big shift. And that's something that happened to me. You know, I went from every weekday driving my kids to hockey practice, soccer practice, going to their games on the weekends. And it's astonishing how much more activity that requires when you're in that mode versus all of a sudden I didn't have those activities and my step count went way down. So you might not even be thinking how that kind of stuff adds up, but if you have a major shift in your life of what your day-to-day life looks like, then there's a chance that your activity level is being affected by that. And if you're not moving as much, then you could be, you know, gaining weight because you're just eating more calories than your body needs. So that awareness um, is going to help you find the solution. And if you're not factoring that in right now, then that's a huge mistake and um, you really need to be aware of that. All right, number four is somewhat related to activity level, but specifically about workouts. And this is the mindset and a lot a lot of times this is holding you back is making the mistake of, again, with this all in or all out mentality, but thinking I got to go to that boot camp, you know, three to five days per week, or I have to do this like high intensity workout five or six days a week and not being able to do that. If right now you're sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, the only way I'm going to get results is, you know, if I join Orange Theory or I join CrossFit or I train for a marathon or something that requires, you know, a ton of commitment and energy and, and upkeep. Um, If going all in with something like that is what you think it requires, then yeah, that's going to be daunting and you're probably, again, going to let the start stop you because you're thinking, how am I going to do that? How am I going to be able to maintain that? And I'm here to tell you that doing something is always better than nothing and you absolutely can get results working out two to three days per week with your strength training and just checking in on your activity level. The big picture is what matters. And when you have an effective plan in place that makes sure that these 
pieces of the puzzle are fitting together for you and what your life looks like, that's how you get the results that you want. Okay, number five, this is a big one. It's a huge mistake when you lack consistency. And this can look like a few different things. I kind of want to talk about, well, I'm not kind of going, I am going to talk about bouncing from one plan to another, one workout program to another. This is something I was so guilty of for years. Um, I would get all into Pilates and I would think I'm going to get the body of my dreams by going to Pilates class. Um, And I really enjoyed it and nothing really changed because again, I wasn't focusing on the other pieces of the puzzle. And then I would, I got really into step aerobics and like, this is going to be it. And then I got into doing the machines at the gym and my goodness, I was not lifting mere amount the weight that I needed to. I wasn't doing it correctly, but I would do these things and I would do them for like two or three months. And then I would just kind of give up. And I would always have this mindset that I would allow myself to be sold on this idea that someone telling me this special program was going to be it for me. Like this, um, you know, strength training program or this hit slash weightlifting workout, this was going to be the program that changed everything. But the fact is, if you are, and so let me tell you, I was very consistent with working out. I was just inconsistent with what I was doing. And I was always kind of starting with something new over and over and over. And it isn't until you start getting consistent with the right things where that's where you're going to start seeing the change. You know, I used to bounce from program to program to program, just thinking the next program is going to be the answer for me. And everything changed when I realized the cold, hard, boring truth that doing the same strength training moves repeatedly over and over and over and over for years is really how you get that change that you desire. And the problem is that it takes at least 12 weeks to start seeing, you know, your, your body build that muscle. Maybe you can lean out a little too, but it takes at least 12 weeks to just start seeing the baby results there. And oftentimes people give up before they even get to that point and understanding it's going to take years to get to your ultimate destination. And most people don't have the patience for that. They want a quick fix. They want to stick with something that is going to give them instant gratification. And that lack of consistency and always focusing on the quick wins gives you a long-term lose and you don't win and you don't get that final result that you really want until you start getting consistent with the right things. Okay, let's move on to mistake number six. And this one, as I was writing this out, I kind of had this big aha moment. Okay, so I knew I wanted to talk about not having an open mind because I've talked about that this before. Like you got to be willing to change your mind and understand that we have better information now. And, you know, those weight loss ideas that you had back in 1995 are no longer relevant. We know better now. And, you know, we know that fad diets are built on this premise of a quick fix and often they're like complicated and complicated in terms of sometimes understanding but often complicated in their execution like it's really hard to stick to it in this world that we live in you know if you are going low carb no carb keto it can be next to impossible to find something palatable to eat in certain situations. And as I was thinking, okay, we need to talk about the importance of being open-minded. I think we also need to acknowledge that we are overly open-minded to things that are complicated and new and a little weird and you know, catchy, because that's what marketing is. That's, that's how our human brains 
you know, want to absorb information. We want that new thing, like this must be it. And oh, if it's complicated, if I gotta take a bunch of supplements, if I need to be prepping these like super specific foods, you know, if they're telling me that I have, that I could only eat brown rice instead of white rice, and it's going to be like so hard, then of course my results are going to be amazing because hard work always equals better results, right? And wrong. And the thing that's funny to me is like, we're so open-minded about these wacky fad diets and like, oh yeah, that we're, I'm going to do that. That makes sense. And then when someone like me comes to you and says, you know, how about let's be open-minded about the fact that it doesn't have to be all that complicated. Um, that maybe you could just start eating a more well-balanced diet. You can make some tweaks, like there definitely needs to be some improvements, but it doesn't have to be this, you know, huge complicated formula to get the results that you want. And the truth in life is that the answer is almost always a lot simpler than we think. And one thing I've learned in my own journey is that often less is more and that you can often really create sustainable results and habits when you start subtracting things. So I encourage you to have an open mind about the fact that it doesn't have to be complicated it can be simple. And just because you're doing something that's giving you pages and pages of a plan and rules and foods to avoid and promises that it's going to fix your non-existent health problem, it's just like, I'm sorry, it's just a scam. It really is. Like there's no other word for it. And the problem is, is that we are open We are open-minded to think that because something is so complicated and specific and different that we think this is finally going to be what works because if it was easy, then you'd already have your results, right? But the thing is, it's simple, it's easy once you have the right information and you probably don't have all the right information you need to build the plan that's actually going to work for you that's going to be simple and sustainable so please be open-minded and be open-minded to the fact that it doesn't have to be hard and be aware that when you start hearing someone talking about a really complicated diet that that's probably not the answer all right Number seven, this is, this is, I see this all the time. I have people ask me to be part of this mistake and I stand firm in my, I don't even want to say belief because it's just a fact. It's not even a belief. It's a fact that the mistake that you're making is avoiding being part of the process. And what do I mean by that? I mean, listen, I, in theory, it's, it sounds great to be like, Hey Lil, be my coach, hand me a meal plan, tell me exactly what to do. And I'm going to go do it. And I, in fact, had a potential client that, you know, we did our 15 minute call not too long ago And I ended up having to tell her, you know, I just, I don't think I'm the right person for you because that is, that's all she wanted. She wanted me to write her a specific meal plan and she just wanted to be told, this is what you should eat. This is the exact workout that you should do. And she wanted it all done for her and she really didn't want to be part of the process. And... I'm just here to say that I personally, that is not the type of coach that I am. My goal is to empower you and the way that you become empowered is for you to have knowledge, have knowledge, basic knowledge about nutrition. Most importantly, learn about the nutrition that works for you and what's going to be right for you. And if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to be part of the process and you, you're not willing to have it be a collaboration and you just want it to be me handing you a plan, 
what's going to happen when you move on and try to do things on your own? You're not going to be able to sustain it. And one thing I always say is my goal as your nutrition coach is to make sure that you never have to spend another dollar on a diet again, right? Like how much money have you wasted on all these different diets or, you know, joining Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or Noom or whatever over the years? Like, I don't want you to have to spend one more dollar. Once we're done working together, I want you to be free like a, like a little birdie and fly on your own and be so empowered to make those choices that work for you. And you have to be the one to help figure out like, hey, this breakfast really works for me and it gives me the energy and keeps me full through lunch and I really enjoy it. And, you know, that is partly on you. It absolutely, do I give you ideas? Can I walk you through how to plan a day of eating? Yes, to all of that. But you have to be involved in the process. And I think that if you just want something handed to you, I personally think that there's a sign that more is going on in your life, more is going on in your head. You are probably very overwhelmed. And maybe you think that, you know, losing weight or, you know, getting this, um, meal plan, this clean eating meal plan, maybe you think that this is going to fix those other things in your life. And while I fully agree and feel that, you know, healthy habits are an essential part of an overall happy life, I don't think it can be the only solution. You got to work on those other things. And I think when someone is so overwhelmed in other areas of their life, then maybe now is not the time to be embarking on this journey. And maybe you got to do it in conjunction with other things, you know, like maybe therapy or whatever that is, maybe working to cut back on your hours at your job or asking your friends and family for help with your children. But I often see that as a sign when someone just says, Lil, tell me what to do, that they just don't have the mental energy and capacity to be part of the process. And in order to really build your feel your best formula, it's yours. You have to take some ownership in that process. And I absolutely, as your coach, I outline the basics. I get to know you. I give you suggestions. Sometimes I do kind of put my foot down and say, listen, you really got to do this. Work with me. Do this for a week and let's see how you feel. You know, I'll be firm with you like that. But at the end of the day, I can't do it for you. And we walk hand in hand to build what is going to work for you in the long term. And if you want to get sustainable results and understand how to change things as needed as your life changes, then you have to be an active participant in creating your plan. Okay, mistake number eight. Your meals are too small and you're snacking too much and you're relying on Frankenstein, what I call Frankenstein food. So what is Frankenstein food? Frankenstein food is when you, and I've done this, you're, you're dieting and you're like, oh, I can't have a brownie, but it's totally okay if I have this brownie that's made with protein powder. And I have kind of drawn like a really clear line in the sand for myself that I will not do those healthified foods. Like, why are we healthifying freaking everything? Why are we making desserts out of protein powder? Why are we trying to create these foods that replicate a food that tastes really good and then we're making a version of it that doesn't taste even half as good and leaves us craving more and wanting to have the real thing anyway because I feel like that's my experience most of the time if I try to make these Frankenstein recipes I'm like why why am I just not eating the real thing it's like so unsatisfying and that's also a sign when you're doing those things that like maybe you're on a diet that is again not sustainable so I'd personally rather hit my protein goals with my meals instead of my desserts and yes like obviously we can find ways of you know I have 
a huge sweet tooth. I, I've talked about that on here often. I love ice cream and I won't even buy the Halo Top ice cream. I think it's disgusting. I don't do well with the alcohol sugars. It upsets my stomach. And, um, you know, I just finally decided I just would rather be the person that just has one small scoop of ice cream instead of trying to ha like make my fake ice cream. Now, in addition, I kind of want to talk about these two things together, but if your meals are too small and you're constantly having these snacks and these foods that are, you know, kind of like made up foods, I don't even know how to explain it, the Frankenstein foods. And if you're constantly living like that and you're not allowing yourself to have like really robust full meals that have the protein that helps you hit your protein goals and you're constantly having these like small snacks and eating diet foods, then that is just taking over your life and you could actually end up eating more because you are hungry and you're not getting full and satisfied with your meals. So my solution for myself and that my client, I haven't had a client yet that said this doesn't work for them, but I encourage you to eat three large meals per day, have a snack or two if you need it, but Honestly, living your life constantly thinking you need to eat something in two to three hours, you are letting food control your life. I found when I started eating three large and filling meals, number one, I was more satisfied. Number two, I'm able to focus on whatever I'm doing at the moment, whether it's recording a podcast or doing some chores or spending time with family, whatever it is, I'm not constantly thinking about like, what's my next meal going to be? And I've felt um, it really positively impacted my relationship with food because I'm just not thinking about it as much and I'm able to focus on the present moment and where I am when for years I just was, con I had so much food noise, constantly thinking about food. What's my next meal? The other thing too, is it helps with decision fatigue because if you have to think of five to six different small meals to eat in your day, oh my God, like that's a lot of decisions. Instead, you just have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then have some go-to snacks and way less decisions in your life. So I just found I was a lot happier, um, less irritable, and it definitely improved my relationship with food to stop eating Frankenstein foods and stop trying to eat every two to three hours thinking it was going to quote boost my metabol metabolism hint it doesn't there's absolutely zero research now we know that it's only about the amount of calories you eat in a day it has nothing to do with the eating two to three uh, sorry the five to six small meals versus eating you know three robust filling meals per day all right let's move on to mistake number nine I feel like you knew this was coming, but alcohol, it's just a fact. If you're consuming multiple alcoholic drinks, even if it is just one day per week, then you're probably erasing any calorie deficit you created during the week. You know, if you're just kind of haphazardly trying to eat clean or diet and you're not following, you know, counting your macros or whatever, if you're ignoring like if you're not tracking your alcohol calories or you're guesstimating your alcohol consumption and not being honest about it, it's probably a big factor in your weight gain and has you feeling like, oh, I can't lose weight even though I feel like I'm doing everything right. But maybe you're drinking an extra thousand calories of wine, you know, once or twice a week and that completely you know, erases any deficit or in if you were in maintenance during the week, you know, Monday through Thursday, and then on the weekend you're having drinks, then it can easily tip you over into the caloric intake that's going to cause you to gain fat. All right, number 10 is our last mistake that we're going to talk about, and it's the one that I'm going to ask you to think about the most because it's going to have the most impact on your ability to get started and keep going as long as you keep this mistake in mind. And I don't know if you do yoga, but at the end of yoga, you often finish with the pose called Shavasana, corpse pose. And when I was doing this to one of my favorite um, yoga practices, the instructor, it's, um, is it 
Joan Elise or Elise Joan, the, the lady that, uh, the instructor that did, I think it's Elise, Elise Joan. Um, she has a yoga practice that is part of a program that I did with Beachbody. And it's one of my favorite, favorite yoga routines. And at the end, she spends, I think it's a good five, six, seven minutes talking about the meaning of corpse pose and how it's like not about a dead body. (laughs) It is about this idea that in order for new things to grow in your life, you know, the old things have to die and you have to get rid of them. And I see all the time women trying to add new things into their life, new things into onto their plate without making room for them by getting rid of the old things that are taking up that space right now. Once I did this, once I saw this in my life that I needed to get rid of things so that I could build new things, everything started coming a lot easier for me because I think as human beings, it's really hard. We hold on to things that aren't good for us just because we know there's certainty in what that looks like. And this could be relationships, people in your life. This could be physical items. This could be mental baggage. The mental baggage is the hardest part to let go. And I'm talking about the beliefs that you think you know. Like, again, you can't learn new things if you're standing your ground on old things. And many of you are holding on to these things that you think you know about dieting and being skinny and how to get those results. And like I said, we know better now. So it physically could look like for you clearing out some items in your home, literally, physically, letting go of things in your home so that you can clear out a space for your home workout area. And this is something that I did uh, years ago, probably almost 10 years ago now, is we just went in the basement and we got rid of a bunch of crap so that we could have a workout area. Like, That is just a very black and white example of that. But then, like I said, you got to go into the mental baggage of it. And, you know, if you have someone who is constantly texting you and needing help in their life and wanting to have support and it's preventing you from being able to take care of yourself, now might be the time to say, hey, Suze. Susan, like, hey, go get yourself a therapist. I'd love to spend time with you. I would love to go out to lunch, go out to dinner, go for a walk, go hiking. But, you know, this time in the morning is my time and I can't be helping you through, you know, your nasty breakup or, you know, the struggles that you're having right now. And I need to focus on myself. Because a lot of times we feel so obligated to help all those people around us that we don't leave room for ourselves. And that's, if we're really looking at it, you know, this, the mistake that you're making is just not letting yourself create the space in your life to step into the person you want to be. And if you're constantly feeling yourself saying like, no, oh, I don't have time to work out or... I don't have the money to spend on dumbbells or I don't have the energy, then ask yourself what is standing in the way of that. And oftentimes you can start identifying the things you need to clear out of your life to make room for this new version of yourself. Like, could you sell something? I've been doing this recently, selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Like if you need to you know, get $150 so that you can buy some dumbbells, look around your house. Is there something you can sell that this new version of yourself doesn't need anymore? And can you sell something so that you can get some extra cash to treat yourself to the thing that this new version of yourself needs? The longer you hold on to the thoughts, the habits, the feelings, the relationships, and the belongings that define that old version of yourself, the harder it's going to be to move forward. And in my opinion, this is the mistake that, number one, you don't realize that you're even making because it's like almost 
subconscious, right? And so I hope that you hearing me say this today brings that to light and maybe you can start examining some of those different areas of your life where you're like, okay, this needs to die. This needs to end. This needs to be cut off. We need to be done with it or we need to reduce it so that I can have the space in my life for this thing that is essential to becoming the person that I want to be. All right, this was a doozy today. This was a big episode. I think this is one that maybe you're going to want to go back and listen to again. As always, you can reach out if you have any questions, comments, just hit that button that says text Lil. And I hope that this episode spoke to your heart, helps you move forward and helps you start stepping into the person that you want to become. And I will see you back here next week for a new episode. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. If you enjoyed the information and discussion we had here today, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. If you're serious about making changes with your nutrition and fitness, then you definitely want to join my weekly newsletter list as well. You can find the link below and more information in the episode details. That's all for today, and we will see you back here next week for a new episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast.